I'm good. How I wanted you? to ask you. I'm doing great, man. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you uh, for a status update on a couple of different people. One, Velveteen Dream, and then also Pat McAfee. Are you guys limiting his appearances, or is that more his choice? No, so there's, there's really nothing to add with Velveteen Dream. Um, we've, we've gone over it a million times. Status update, he's, he's still training. Um, he had a little bit of a physical thing here for a bit, but uh, st still, still there, still with us, still PC, still training. Um, on the roster. As far as Pat McAfee, no, you know, like Pat's, Pat's limitations are, he's a busy guy. Uh, Pat is one of the most successful, um, I, I don't, I, I, I hate to put a, a title on what he does because I feel like it's limiting to him, but like you say, like podcaster, media personality, um, sports world personality, that, you know, almost every weekend that I, that I look on online during football season, Pat seems to be trending uh, on the weekends. His coverage of football, his his association with FanDuel, uh, just everything that he does. This, as you can imagine, going into the playoffs and into the Super Bowl was a very busy time for him. So it was not a matter of you know, it's, everybody leads into everything and um, has a take on it, and then it runs on the internet and. Everybody speculates, and Pat loves that, um, as do we. So it's uh, you know uh, his his uh, his uh, his learning about his firing on the air was uh, greatly exaggerated. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it's, it, Pat just he's a busy dude, and and we've been talking about it. And uh, he had said, "Look, give me a give me a moment to breathe when the Super Bowl is over," because uh, you know he just got married not that long ago, and he's like my. If I, if I don't take a breath for a minute after this Super Bowl, I might not be married for much longer. You know, my word's not his. Uh, I, I think he just needed to take a breather, and uh, if we can engage uh, here back again, he loves it. And, that, and that's the one thing that I love about Pat. When, when you have somebody from outside that comes in that loves it, and, and by outside, I, it's hard for me to even refer to him as an outsider because he so loves what we do, it's hard not to see him like an insider. But um, when you get somebody like that, or, or even right now, I, I can tell you, I have not been more impressed um, with anyone sort of kind of walking in the door with a, hey, I'd like to, to do this thing with you guys and kind of engage with you but as Bad Bunny. Like, my, my, I, I cannot, he is phenomenal, so respectful to what we do, is the biggest fan, is living a dream right now. But in, in every way that you could possibly imagine, he's respectful and loves what we're doing and, and, and is so into it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I see him training all the time. I see him working out all the time. Um, when he's there, he's just one of the guys. And it's awesome to see. And I, I really can't say enough good stuff about him. We'll go next to Todd Davy at Intersectum. Hey, Todd. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Good. Just wanted to ask you about uh, one of your NXT alumni in Australian, Rhea Ripley. Um, we saw her at the Royal Rumble bus for the second second position. I was just reading earlier, there uh, hasn't been an official announcement on what brand she'll go on from here. Uh, has there been a decision made on that? And further to that, what potential do you see for her on the main roster? Well, I, I've, I've been uh, vocal about her in the past. Me, I, I don't know that there is you know, everybody has brings skill sets to the table. At her age, 23, I think still, um, you know, her, her maturity, where she is now from where she was a year ago, is she's just a different level of confident performer. Um, she brings so much to the table from a work ethic, an attitude, an ability. She is a sponge um, for learning. She's humble to it. She wants to learn. She wants to work with everybody. I mean, I, I can't say enough good stuff about her. And to me, if you were to say, name me a breakout star right now, um, you know, and, and, and again, I, I would sit with Bianca Belair in that same category because she's our, but, but she's kind of sort of there already doing it, right? And so, uh, but if I was to say, who's that next person to step into those roles and, and really just game changer over the next year or two is Rhea. Like I just she just has it written all over her, as does a Bianca. You know, there there's certain talent you just see it in and it's just a matter of how it unfolds. So sky's the limit. We'll go 
next to Sean Ross Staff at Fightful. Hey, Sean. Hey, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, thank we, you. The, with the integrated deal with Universal and, and Peacock and, of course, two major cable shows on on the USA platform, have there been any discussions of NXT appearing on the Peacock platform, uh, just separate of the WWE Network integration that, that will be a part of that? Sorry, meaning, me, I'm, I'm not sure how you mean that, meaning the actual show? As, as, yes, as running it live on Peacock. Uh, you know, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm not 100% sure in those conversations. That would be a, a question for, you know, a Nick or a, a, a staff or somebody. I, I've not, um, I've not, uh, you know, at, at that level of detail with the, the Peacock thing, I, I haven't been engaged in it at that point. The, um, the, the, the great thing about, um, NXT and its placement right now on USA, one, they're extremely happy with the product, two, they're extremely happy where it sits, but it, it's, you have to look at it all as one big circular kind of universe. They all kind of pitch into each other. And so having the platform of USA with NXT, much like Raw, to pitch you to Peacock and to pay-per-views and all the other content, um, that's just me speaking, would seem like it would be the best place for it to be. The relationship with USA is, is really strong um, and remains for NXT. Where that goes in the future, I, I, I you know, obviously for any anything, that's that's up in the air. And as, as these platforms shift and move and um, their desire to push uh, subscribers and or viewers in certain directions, obviously, is a part of this. But the, the great thing about Peacock, this FECU relationship, it just strengthens across the board. They're all synergistic to each other. And, you know, when you talk about the size and the strength of Peacock, it just increases the viewership dramatically. So if there's a special event coming on there, the ability for more people than ever before, by far, to be able to see that event and to have eyeballs on that event and to get cross-promotion across everything is bigger than it's ever been before, and that's the goal. Thank you, Craig. This will be the last, this will be the last question for the day. Thank you. We'll go to Nick Houseman at Rest in Hi, Nick. Hi, Paul. Thank you very much for taking the time today. Thank you. Uh, my question for you is uh, about Steve Cutler's release. I was wondering if uh, the circumstances around it have changed the way uh, that you and the company are handling talents who don't follow appropriate COVID pro uh, protocols and precautions. I got to be honest, I don't have anything, I, I have no knowledge of precisely that situation or, or what went into it. Uh, it, it. It really had nothing to do with me or we take COVID seriously across the board. Uh, with everything. We're expecting our talent to be as safe as possible. We're taking every precaution we can from a testing and a cleaning and a uh, just every precaution that we've been advised to take that it's best for us to take and, and we're taking it all very seriously. It's uh, the safety and health of our performers, our staff, our crew is first and foremost on anything we do. So. Um, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, again, I don't know the, that all that situation. I only know what's been speculated to me or, or, or and or what I've, what I've read, but I've not, I've not specifically asked and I've not, I don't have that information. All right, folks, got to wrap up today's conference call. Thank you all for joining us as always. I'll turn it back over to Paul for some closing comments. So thank you guys very much for being a part of this today. Um, again, um, I think these are very valuable, and, and uh, I, I appreciate you all being a part of them and asking really um, good questions across the board on everything. So I look forward to doing these. As I said, this uh, this weekend's uh, Vengeance show should be spectacular, and uh, it's just sort of a kickoff as we are well onto the road to WrestleMania with Elimination Chamber and Fast Lane around the corner, and then, of course, WrestleMania week, which... Um, emanating from Raymond James Stadium and everything else uh, should be amazing and spectacular, and I look forward to all of it. So thank you for the support, and we'll talk real soon. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk again after takeover on Sunday night. Everybody stay safe.